Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. My guest today is TD, um, also known as Techno Disaster, if I got that right. Uh, you are one of the maintainers of the Matrix.sdk and you are a contributor to Fluffy Chat uh, with mm -hmm. a particular focus on calls there. Um, you love to play with Matrix RTC and you gave a talk at Fosdem 2024 in the Fosdem Dev Room uh, demonstrating Fluffy Chat and Element having a Matrix RTC based call together because we all love interoperability. Uh, but you are here today to talk about something you did with Cloudflare. So can you tell us what is Cloudflare call? Yes. Um, weekend project, I came up with a blog uh, from Cloudflare uh, discussing the Cloudflare calls new SFU stuff. Um, sounded really cool and I decided to make it work with Matrix RTC. Um, so to start with, Cloudflare calls is a um, global SFU. And being a global SFU and Cloudflare being Cloudflare with their huge network, this gives us this gives us some really good advantages. Um, for uh, it's it's it, it does the normal SFU bits, the fancy SFU bits like uh, uh, single stream uh, scalable calls and stuff. But apart from that, Cloudflare being so big, the latency is really noticeable. So, for example, we used to have we still have LiveKit as an SFU for our internal family calls, but that is hosted in Germany. And so when, whenever I try to test or debug calls, I need to connect to a SFU in Germany and the latency is super visible. For example, I would move my hand like this and um, the windows would show a noticeable latency. With Cloudflare, with Cloudflare you it's basically just instant because it connects you to the closest SFU, it does some fancy magic internally, and you have a really nice latency. Um, I think it's missing some other fancy features like simulcast, LiveKit supports simulcast, but uh, the block says that it's on their to-do list. But apart from that, it has the cascading feature, um, which LiveKit also does have, but it's not in the open source version, but it allows me to connect to a SFU in India, for example, and you could connect to a SFU in Europe and we would both have the lowest possible latency. Uh, on the other hand, if you use Cloudflare, we both, we both would have to connect to the SFU in Germany, and um, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works. Maybe for, for the audience who is uh, less uh, well-versed into um, what SFUs are, um, so the way matrix calls work right now uh, natively in matrix is by co connecting directly the pairs together, mm -hmm. and the SFU is a way to make it more scalable because the more people you have in a in a call, the more connections you have to uh, mm -hmm. to maintain. Mm -hmm. And ASFU is a point of centralization, so that as an individual uh, who is trying to join a call, you have a single connection with the ASFU, and then the ASFU is handling the rest. Is this correct? Did I get this right? Yes. Right. So Cloudflare call is basically providing the ASFUs as infrastructure um, mm -hmm. for free. Not for free. Not really. Not really. It's not even open source. Um, apparently, it gives you a terabyte of data per month for free, um, and then it's some pricing, which I'm not sure about. All right. So they have a launching offer, so you can play with it. Mm -hmm. And they got you with that because you have played ah. with it. Ah. Um, <laughs> so is Cloudflare called based on Matrix or not at all? Or is it something completely different? It is not uh, based on Matrix, but it does. Uh, it, it provides you with a very simple HTTP API, um, which makes it really easy to plug into the existing Matrix RTC system. All right. So how did you do that? Because you made the SFUs talk Matrix, or you used the SFUs for Matrix calls. Yes. Uh, Really not that difficult. So it provides you with a simple HTTP API, as I said. Uh, you can create, uh, so for example, you go ahead and hit an endpoint session. It creates a new session for you. The, all the uh, all the signaling which has to be done for the RTC then goes through the API to, SF, to the SFU. So um, you just pass in your uh, SDP offer and your SDP local description and stuff. Uh, to the API, the API then creates the P, uh, then tells the SFU to create a peer connection for you, and then uh, returns you the answer SDP. Uh, so you just uh, handle it like a usual peer connection, um, but it just goes through the sim simple HTTP API Cloudflare has provided. All right. Um, can we see it in action? Do you have a demo of what you did? I do. 
um, screen sharing. Screen sharing. This goes over here. This goes over here. All right. I can see your screen. Yes, I need to move. Uh, I, I was trying to scroll in the screen sharing. <laughs> hmm. You can ignore the logs. I just really right, like to have um, red logs because they are more noticeable. But uh, this is the family app, by the way. I don't think this has ever been shown here before. Um, you join a call, see the, the join a call thing, join a call from here. Th this does feel a bit slow right now, but that's because I cut some corners and did not uh, implement ice trickle and stuff. But there you go. That has a video. That has a video. And this, this latency is very noticeable. Um, and now if uh, I probably need to change my screen, but and if you see the events now, it, it posts something like the tracks. So what we do for um, pulling the tracks from remote is uh, you first of all, you create a new session with Cloudflare using the new session endpoint. Um, uh, you then publish your tracks over there. At the same time, you also update your matrix state event with the session ID and the track name, which you have published. Um, and then Cloudflare has another API, the pull tracks API, which allows you to pull the track uh, given the session, uh, given the track name and the session name. So other clients just list your um, member events, uh, go through your tracks, and then hit Cloudflare to pull the um, tracks you have mentioned. That's how both of the participants get your tracks. And the rest of it is similar. You just um, leave your call, it goes, um, it removes the tracks, and then it knows that the call has ended. All right. Um, so does it mean that we can get free matrix calls forever thanks to Cloudflare or not really? I think you hinted that not really. Not really. I, I do have a, a, their blog post open over here. So if you see uh, this, I, uh, I have the pricing section open and to kick it off, it is currently free and not open source. Uh, you get some uh, bandwidth for free at the start uh, and then that's the pricing apparently. All right. Um, so do you plan to push the experiment further? Are there more things you'd like to do? Well, not right now, but the, um, uh, the Cloudflare API gave me a super cool idea which we could implement into RTC, uh, Matrix RTC. Um, right now, what you have to do to implement LiveKit is you implement the LiveKit client SDKs and the uh, SFU. And so each of your client element fluffy chat family has to implement their own version of the live kit client SDK. Mm -hmm. um, this does not really sound interoper interoperable because you are kind of depending on live kit, but what you could have is a similar um, RTC plugin or a RTC proxy. Um, uh, this could get merged into the backend spec or it could be its own standalone thing. Uh, it, this gives you uh, endpoints like the Cloudflare thing does where you can publish and post your STT, uh, STP back, uh, frames. And um, so uh, this handles your uh, SFU backends. Uh, it could handle LiveKit, it could handle Cloudflare. Um, so your clients don't need to implement the uh, LiveKit SDK in particular. You just have to create a peer connection or two in LiveKit's case. Uh, they all go through this one backend. And with this, uh, what could be possible is one of your clients uh, passes the SDP tracks to the live kit backend. Uh, the uh, proxy in the middle handles all of that. But then I don't have to implement the live kit backend. I could just hit the proxy to pull the tracks. And uh, after all, it's just a peer connection. So I could, for example, be uploading to the Cloudflare SFU, but then pulling your tracks from the live kit SFU. So we are not really live uh, SFU dependent. Mm -hmm. And um, this feels much more interoperable. But uh, again, just an idea. I have no idea if this could work. Well, one thing I could suggest is actually to try to write the MSC because the process is very open. So if this is something you'd like to receive some feedback on from uh, the uh, the rest of the people who are working on Matrix RTC, writing a little MSC draft is probably a very cheap option. And uh, you can get feedback from some people yes, who, um... who also work on the topic. That's one of the thing. Uh, the, why uh, that's one of the other things. Matrix RTC is not really expecting. It's a lot of trial and error. 
But uh, if you look at it this way, each uh, all of the MSCs need an implementation anyway. So we are just in the implementing phase. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wonderful. Hopefully all of the clients switch to the spec proposal or the spec once it gets in because uh, that sounds like breaking changes, but well. Yeah. Um, is there anything we forgot to mention that you want to talk about? No, that's it. All right, then fantastic. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for the very clear explanations and taking the time to put together a demo. And I'll see you around Matrix Live. Cheers.